It's a light bulb. It's a transformer. It's a robot in disguise. A Decepticon, probably, owing to the fact they're probably giving quite a deceiving lifespan for this of 50,000 hours. I'm sure the meta will still be round after 50,000 hours, but not that, but not the light output. So this has been requested by quite a few people because it seems to be a trending thing at the moment. And the idea is that you screw this into a lamp holder. And it has these panels that can be folded out. So you can choose to have it as a high bay light with these pointing straight down, which it covers quite a large area. Or you can choose to have it shining light into the corner of a room. And one of the advantages of being uh, adaptable like this is that it fits in a very small box. And to give you an idea of how small a box it fits into, here is one of the side panels of the box. It's not big at all. It really is. It's like smaller than my hand. The sticky plaster, incidentally, is just to protect the squeamish from that big gash in the side of my hand. These things happen. So it says, arrive at home to a fully lit garage. And then it shows a picture for some inexplicable reason of what looks like a Japanese automated parking garage. They're fascinating things. Oh, if you want to find one of these online, look for E27 deformable LED. I'm not sure that, uh, I'm not sure the word deformable, deformable can to me, me means crushing and destroying things, but deformable it is. So uh, let's plug it in and test this. So I'm going to fold these out a little bit and I'm going to get a lamp holder. Notable things, it has this little round bit sticking down, which really does help with spinning it into lamp holders, but it's also available with a... Uh, radar module so actually detect movement. I'm guessing that probably sits down into the base of this. So I'm going to bring in the hoppy and we'll see what flickers and what doesn't. So here's the hoppy. Let's plug this in. Hoppy flickering away. The 60 watt light is drawing actually almost 50 watts. Um, current 365 milliamps. Power factor 0.5, which is pretty terrible. So let's measure the apparent power. The apparent power would be 243 volts times 0.364. Apparent power is just short of 90 watts. But actual power that's been... Uh, apparent power of that, but actual power being used approximately 50 watts. Some of that will be losses in the driver. And it's bright. It's very bright. Swampy, swampy. It's certainly in a room. It competes quite favourably with... I'm going to turn this off. Note there's no flicker. This is good. Let's get the hoppy out the way. The hoppy does have flicker. And I'll unscrew it from the pink lamp holder. Label on the bottom says input AC 170 volts to 265 volts. Not sure if this isn't available in an American and Canadian 120 volt version or other countries that are around about that. Power, it says, 60 watt colour white, available in various shades of white. Uh, comparing it, it was compared favourably to this lamp that I use in one of my rooms, which has 660 LEDs. But before you think, oh, that's great, because this one's using less LEDs, keep in mind that this one runs fairly cool, because it is a large number of LEDs over a large area. This one's rated 40 watts, and this one is using... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight times six, 48 LEDs in each of these panels. So they're going to get a lot hotter, but then these are mounted onto these rather smart transformer heat sinks. Another thing, the instructions that came with it said, the packaging, it hinted that I'm looking around for it here, and it says cast aluminum heat sink heads, LED module. Standard lamp holder, stainless steel braided cable. Stainless steel braided cable, is that really stainless steel braided cable? I'm not really sure. I bought this one on Banggood. It wasn't supplied free by Banggood. I bought it myself so I can say anything I like about it. I can express doubt as to whether these LED modules will last a long time running at the best part of 20 watts each, but time will tell. After I've made this video, I should have done this before, I shall take a thermal image of this and in the description down below I'll tell you what temperature the sort of areas of the, the unit got up to. I'll give the temperature for the centre on the back here. Hold on. Little target. There's a wee target. I'll give you a wee 
temperature for there. I'll also give temperatures on the surrounding area and uh, maybe even actually taking this off. I will be taking this off to take the LED panel out. But um, I would guess that these screws probably hold uh, not just the diffuser in the front, but the LEDs in circuit boarding as well. I'm also noticing there's a little trench around here. Do you see that little trench? I think that might be for a seal. Have they tried to make this waterproof? Don't know. It's got ventilation holes in the front. Uh, four at this end, four at end, that end, that's good. It's going to allow a bit of air in to circulate and maybe protect the LEDs a little bit. But most of the heat will be dissipated from the back of this. Um, I also see ventilation holes for the driver, whatever it is. In here, there's four, four, and four, but I don't see any at the top. I'm not sure what the driver's going to be. Let's open it and find out. Screwdriver. Ugh. Let's uh, get this cover off. What's it going to be? One big driver for them all, with them all in series, or are they all going to be in parallel? I don't think, given the power rating, that it's going to be a capacitive dropper, so it will be a switching power supply. Hopefully this is staying fairly in focus. It's quite smart. The fact the heads can be shaped into to point light into different areas is actually quite useful. I do wonder about longevity though. Time will tell. Oh, I should uh, mention... Oh, hold on. Where's the listing for that? Uh, there it is. This is the Banggood was... Twenty dollars ninety nine. I have to say that's pretty average for the price. Sort of twenty dollars in the case of the UK. The cheapest I could find was about twenty pounds, but the price varies dramatically, up to well over double that. So be very careful. Also, there are those options of the uh, the other version with the uh, radar detector in it, which is quite useful. I think the picture of it in the listing because I ordered one, but uh, it's I've only just ordered it. Uh, showed a little switch on the side, as if, oh, there. Uh, it's got a channel there with uh, one of the ribs missing, and it showed a little switch around about there that could be used to enable or disable that. Ooh. A foam block. Let's see, let's hope this isn't fully charged up. It looks very modular, perhaps. Don't know. Oh, it's three separate power supplies. It is literally just three completely separate power supplies. Based on, let's see if I can get my BP2832A, which is an absolutely standard driver. Um, are these, is it kind of semi-isolated? Or is it a buck regulator? I'm thinking from the fact that that is running up there, this is a buck regulator. So, as with all metal fixtures, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna just uh, bring this, now that I'm down at that level, I'm just gonna bring the focus, let's focus on that barcode there, um, to bring it down to midpoint. As with all fixtures like this, I'm gonna say, if you feel the need to adjust it, I would recommend making sure that you're never ever touching this. The same applies to all metal bodied lamps, like, say, for instance, these metal housed ones. Never hold on to anything ground into your other hand. Never stand on wet ground while you're adjusting things like these because although it should be isolated, you just never can tell, particularly in a light that's failed where it can burn through the, uh, the thin fiberglass shim and make contact with the aluminium. So that's interesting. I wasn't expecting it to be three separate supplies. There's the vent holes at the bottom, but there is... Is there any obvious air vent at the top? There's not. It seems to... It seems to close quite tightly. It's a shame there's not vent holes at the top, just to keep all that circuitry cool. There's another thing I'll check then. I'll check how hot the circuitry in here gets up to. Next thing to take to bits. Let's take one of the LED panels out. Um, this is going to require a hex driver. Let's see if I've got one that'll fit in here. So I can get a lucky guess here. Is this going to reveal an awful lot? I don't think so, but hey, let's take it out anyway. 
I think it's going to reveal... I wonder if the spacer will be on the plastic or there'll be a separate spacer. I think the plastic is possibly the spacer here. And I would guess there's going to be a bit of heatsink compound in the back. I could be wrong. It's not immediately popping out. Oh, there it is popping out. So the circuit board... Can I hike that out? Is it glued in? It's kind of coming out. Oh, a wee tiny dab of heat sink. There we go. It's pretty much what you'd expect, isn't it? It's that little aluminium backed PCB. It's got a tiny blob of the heat sink compound. Uh, not sure what they were talking about, about the braided cable. Not really seeing a braiding unless it's the actual cores of the cable themselves are stainless steel, but I wouldn't expect that because it looks like it's soldered fairly easily onto the circuit board. It says 2835 and then it's got the number of LEDs. Has it got a number of LEDs? Uh, 2824. I don't know. Or is that just the other type of LED it could use? Probably. It looks like a fairly standard circuit board. Uh, the plastic has the spacers in the back that push that against the back of the aluminium housing. Okay. Right, what else is there to say about this? Um, not really much. It is three separate drivers with C three separate LED panels. It means that if one of those LED drivers goes, as long as it doesn't short out, it means that you're not going to lose the whole light. You're going to lose one section. The power factor is what you'd expect. More of an issue in the future with uh, the smart meters when they start charging for that. For apparent power, it's going to suddenly cost twice as much to run. It's going to be almost as much as a 100 watt lamp to run. Uh, an old tungsten one when they, they start charging for apparent power. Um, the aluminium housings are quite nice. It'll be interesting to see what temperature they get up to. And it feels quite robust. It's quite focusable. So, so far, it's actually quite neat. Very stylish. Uh, not much else to say about it. So I'm going to do the tests now and I shall leave the in the comments uh, description down below I'll leave the results of some thermal tests both of the internal power supply uh, the LED panels themselves I'll put the cover over this um, and how much how they're dissipating heat into the heat sinks and we can maybe assess from the temperature it goes up to how long we expect these to last. Uh, oh, you know what I'm kind of missing a trick here. I could measure the voltage across these couldn't I? Yeah, uh, while I've got that open, I could power that up and measure the voltage across it. Let's do that. So let's bring the meter in. Let's set it to uh, anticipatory 200 volts DC. Let's bring in the pink power supply. Screw that on there. This is where I could also put on my shades so I don't get dazzled by the light. That would probably be a good idea. Although having said that, mini avalanche occurring here, uh, these will also stop me seeing the meter. But hey, yeah, that's not bad. Right, let's plug this in. And quickly before this gets too hot, keep in mind it's live, it means voltage. About 72 volts. 72 volts. Let's do the maths. So, 72 volts. There are, uh, what was that, 24, 48. 72 volts divided by 48 LEDs. Oh no, so they must be in parallel pairs. They must be, uh, so that uh, 72 volts divided by the 24 equals, oh, that was wrong. Uh, 72 volts divided by the 24 pairs then equals about 3 volts. So that's probably what it is then. That's interesting. I thought they might have actually just wired them all as long series string, but I guess they might be just trying to keep the voltage down because if they had wired them all in series, 
That would have been um, 48 LEDs times 3 volts. That would have been 144 volts. So it starts getting high. And that also limits the ability to use a buck regulator set for 120 volts. So that's probably why they've done that. Um, what else is there to say? There's 144 LEDs. Each is passing, say, about 20 watts. 70, uh, so let's try and work out the current through them. Um, let me think of this. So there's a total of uh, 40 LEDs. Uh, let, me, let me think here. The power of this was uh, roughly about, say, it was over, say, 18 watts per section, 18 watts, divided by the 40 LEDs equals about a third of a watt per LED. Okay, so about 100 milliamps per LED, I would say then. So that'll be a 200 milliamps going through the, the parallel pairs. Okay, right, well, I'm going to do these tests and then I'll leave the results down below in the description.